Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Multi Orgasmic Millionaire Podcast. This episode is coming from the bottom of my heart to all of the single mamas out there. I have a boyfriend. I've had a boyfriend since June 2020. And even though I have, I've also been married and divorced twice before that. So I had a series of very much trauma bonding relationships before I went to trauma resolution therapy. (laughs) And after doing that, I was able to heal so many parts and pieces of my inner child self um, in order to create a conscious, loving relationship that wasn't based on trauma bonding. And what do I mean by trauma bonding? I mean, like, when you're attracted to someone because you share the same core wounds as they do, and you two are kind of co-regulating the trauma bond where you're feeding off of each other to continue to perpetuate that story that was created whenever the traumas happened. So (laughs) when we overcome and move beyond trauma bonding relationships, we're able to create what I call conscious relationships or sacred partnerships where we're not attracted to someone based on core wound matching, but we're, we choose a partner based on the fact that, oh, wow, this is a really great relationship partner. And this is also a person that I like to have sex with, right? (laughs) So it's very much a conscious choosing where there's not this pull of like, oh my God, I have to be with this person or I'm going to die or, oh my God, I have to hear from him. You know, like when you get that sort of energy with someone that usually means that you're trauma bonding. And when there's a grounded energy where it's kind of like, eh, you know, I really like this. I really enjoy this. But also if it didn't work out, I'd be totally okay too. Right. That sort of grounded energy is so different than the trauma bonding and uh, the trauma bonding energy. So My point being is that when I did trauma resolution therapy, I, I found my boyfriend, Chris, and who's been on this podcast a couple of times. And when we were together, we, we entered into what I call a partnership where I have my kids and he has a kid himself who's well, an adult now really. Uh, and mine are teenagers. So we each had our own families. We had each raised stepchildren, two stepchildren each. And by the time we got together, it was no more of like, oh, I need him to be a stepdad or I need him to take an, on that dad role, right? No, it was not that for me. My kids didn't need another dad. They had or they already have a dad and they already had a stepdad. And it was like, okay, we don't need to do this again. Right. And when I entered into my partnership now, it was very much like I hold my own. And to be very honest and real with you guys, like we keep things separate. Like I have my finances separate than his and we help each other out when we need, but like everything is very much like, these are my children. I take 100% responsibility for them. If you want to help out, amazing. Thank you so much. And (laughs) I appreciate it. And I also don't expect you to do that. Right. Because again, we had both raised stepchildren and we both didn't really want to do it again. So while I don't really identify with the single mama archetype, in a lot of ways, I still operate as a single mom because I do take full responsibility for my children. Whereas when I think that you have a stepfather role, that there's more of like this, I'm going to provide for them and I'm going to step in and be their dad sort of thing. And while Chris has done an amazing job of like stepping in when a man needed to step in, I've also never expected that of him, which makes it just this beautiful partnership of like being able to give and receive at will versus obligations and roles and feeling a sense of duty to do it. Uh, so it's been a very different dynamic for me. While I never really consider myself a single mom, I had an experience that had come up recently where 
I had the amazing opportunity to really look in and dive into the wound of the single mom. So today we're going to be talking about from mama bear to mama care, (laughs) how to tame your protective instincts and connect with your inner strength and your inner queen. Oh my God. I'm so excited to share with you about how I've been able to really allow myself the opportunity to feel, to deeply, deeply, deeply feel the depth and the pain and the pain of the single mama wound and how it took me literally 13 years. My kid, my oldest is 15 and his dad and I were divorced when he was two and a half. So it's literally taken me uh, almost 13 years to allow myself to really touch the depths of the pain of this wound. So I'm excited to share with you today this story. So before I get started, (laughs) here's the intro to the podcast. This is the Multi-Orgasmic Millionaire Podcast, the only sex podcast for seven and eight figure conscious leaders who want to embody their pleasure and have the best sex of their lives. I'm Tilly Storm, top 20 sex coach in the world and your host today. All right, my loves, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. If you are a single mom, this is for you. This is so, so, so for you. Ah, take a deep breath. (laughs) This is a vulnerable episode for me to share. I had an experience recently where I got to feel the depth of the single mom wound, which is the wound of feeling completely and utterly alone and helpless. And like, oh my God, if I cannot help myself, how in the world I'm going to help my children and how are the world, how in the world are any of us going to survive? So it was the end of April and I had a financial obligation that I was wanting to square away with to take care of. And I had some income that I was expecting that completely fell through at the last minute. And I mean, like in the five figure range. And it was a lot, (laughs) it was a lot of money at once. And I was expecting things to come through. And then all of a sudden they did not. And this experience sent me into one of the most challenging, deepest, darkest pits of like complete and utter helplessness that I have ever felt in my entire adult life. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm laughing at it now because some of the, the miracles that ensued after to make up for this large amount of money that was coming my way that all of a sudden wasn't anymore. It totally came, but at the time it was like, holy hell, how in the world am I supposed to come up with all of this in a couple of days time? And I have, I have no idea what's going to happen after this. And this experience sent me into a complete freeze. My entire system shut down. Like I could not, I could barely get out of bed. I was waking up in the middle of the night for like three nights straight, frozen, frozen, like if, if you could think of a mama bear in the woods who was attacked by another creature and this mama bear is playing dead girl. That was me. I was just dead. Like <laughs> asked my boyfriend. He's like, Oh my God, can you just get up? Can you just get up and do something and get a fire under your ass and go do something? And I'm like, no. And I was a complete mess. And all I could do in this moment was to be with the experience to be with this fear. And I didn't know where the fear came from. And I kept, I kept telling my boyfriend, I was like, I don't know where this comes from. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand why this is so deep, why I am so mistrusting of life, why I am so blowing this out of proportion. It's not like my life is going to be over 
if this thing doesn't get paid in the next couple of days, like everything will be okay. And yet my nervous system is reacting as if I am getting killed as if there is like a knife at my throat <laughs> where I am just completely shut down. And I'm like, where the hell does this come from? I don't know. Is it generational trauma is a like massive scarcity problem. I like, I could not point a finger at it to save my life, nor did I really care because I knew that it, it didn't matter where it came from. It just mattered that I was feeling the fuck out of it. I was feeling some massive feels that sent me into a complete and utter spiral. And these couple of days that this was going on, I have never been in my entire adult life so challenged to be with something that was so uncomfortable. I mean, ayahuasca ceremonies, psilocybin, like like divorce, uh, you know, a tragic thing that created the divorce, uh, a circumstance that, that resulted in the divorce, like all of these things aside, I have never felt so triggered into this freeze response. And also I've never had such a challenging time just being with the sensations of this freeze being with the, it felt like terror. It felt like terror in my body. And it took several days to wake up one morning and I was driving my kids to school and all of a sudden it hit me like a ton of bricks. And the thought crossed my mind of like, oh, this is the mama bear single mom wound. This is, this is the mama bear coming out in me. And let me tell you, I got a fierce as fuck mama bear. This mama bear went through NICU. If you are a mama and you've been through NICU, oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) You know what, you know what I'm talking about. So planned home birth to, or planned, not even home birth, but planned free birth to Nikki birth. Holy fuck. My first one was a free birth at home and I had totally expected the same thing. So when second one came, it was like a complete defenses up. Oh my God. I have to go to the hospital now. Like all defenses were up. And Mama Bear was out and Mama Bear was protecting me. And Mama Bear did an amazing job at birthing that baby, at making sure that he had the most natural birth possible on all fours and on on the floor in a hospital, right? Mama Bear did amazing at getting that kid to breastfeed, even though he was six weeks early (laughs) and it wasn't really happening at first. Mama Bear served me in so many ways. And yet 12 years later, mama bear was no longer serving me. (laughs) And I recognized it as I was driving my kids to school. Like, oh my God, this is mama bear coming out. And this is not good. This is not good. I need mama bear to chill the hell out because she is overreacting. And I recognized it in that moment that this is actually a, a loop. This is a loop the nervous system, what happens when it goes through a traumatic experience is that unless the stress cycle is completed, then the nervous system and the body will continue to create experiences that will allow you to release it if you know how to do that. And I was recognizing this as a moment to complete that stress cycle. I was like, oh my God, I get to finally let this go. <laughs> I get to finally give mama bear a freaking break because I'm not alone because the universe does support me because God does support me because the universe is benevolent because life is safe because it is safe to be here. It is safe to be here on this planet. It is safe. (sighs) And I just kept tending to myself. Being with Mama Bear, letting her know, I've got you. 
I've got you. Even if things don't work out the way we want, I've got you. I've got you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you. You're going to be fine. You're going to be okay. It might not be what you want, but it's going to be okay. And we're still going to survive. I know you don't think you are, but we're still going to survive. (laughs) And in this experience, I came home after dropping my kids off and and basically just melted into a puddle of tears with my boyfriend when I got home from dropping them off. And he's like, what is going on? And I'm like, I don't know how to be with myself anymore. Like I need to have, I need to throw a tantrum. I need to throw a freaking tantrum. And I was in that moment, I was just bawling and crying and like moving my body around and stroking my chest, which is something that I do to really calm the nervous system down is to just place one hand over your throat and stroke from your throat down to your breast cavity. And I was just stroking that and just being with the intensity of this entire situation and calming my nervous system. And then I went to the bathroom after throwing a tantrum and I come back and I get a notification on my phone and the notification was telling me that I had received what I needed to receive to take care of the financial obligation that I wanted to take care of. And that I was expecting to have taken care of. And (laughs) I immediately burst out in laughter. And so did he. And we were just laughing our fucking asses off at the hilarity, at the fucking hilarity that I had to go through all of that, all of the pain, all of the discomfort, all of the terror, the utter terror, just to get to recognize that once again, the universe always provides. Once again, life is safe. Once again, we always get what we require. Once again, God is good. (laughs) And it was in that moment that I was like, oh my God, I think maybe, I think maybe I have completed that stress cycle. The stress cycle of the trauma that happened from NICU birth, from having children and being divorced and being single immediately after my second one was born. So the one I was sharing, Mama Bear came out when uh, he was born because of the situation of his birth. Uh, We, his dad and I got divorced literally like a couple months after he was born. And that's when single mama, mama bear became like an identity inside of me. So how do we step out and complete these stress cycles to step out of the mama bear mode and to embrace our, and connect with our own inner strength and our inner queen? Well, I've already shed some light on some of the things that I did to move through this stress cycle, to complete it, to complete this loop that had been coming up for me for 13 years almost. And I, I would say that being with the intensity of the thing without trying to change it, I would just wrap my arms around myself. I would hug myself and I'd say, I love you. I love you. I've got you. I've got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I choose pleasure and I choose abundance and I choose joy and I choose ease and grace. So it was acknowledging what I was experiencing without trying to get rid of it, without trying to say, oh, I wish I could just get over this. I wish I could just not feel this anymore, right? I'd been doing that for 13 years. It wasn't working. I wasn't getting over it. (laughs) I was still finding myself in pure mama bear freak out mode many times since mama bear came out. And giving myself the opportunity to be with this intensity of her 
this intensity of wanting to protect, this intensity of wanting to provide, being with that, giving myself space to feel the depth of that intensity, to be with the pain of feeling utterly alone and that no one, knowing that no one was going to come and save me, knowing that I was the only one who could be with this, who could save myself from this just by being with it. (laughs) And I actually had a mentor tell me, all you got to do is be with it. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, like easy for you to say, easy for you to say, worked out for you. What if it doesn't work out for me? And then just being with that, being with that thought, like letting it pass, letting, letting myself know I'm not the thought. It's just something I'm experiencing right now. That doesn't mean I'm going to experience a letdown. It doesn't mean I'm going to experience my worst fears. It doesn't mean I'm going to be in this terror forever. And being with it, and then this miracle coming through at the very, the at the 11th hour, right? Recognizing and remembering life is good. God is good. I'm supported. All is well. <laughs> some of the hardest lessons we put ourselves through, but it was a beautiful moment to let that go, to let mama bear know that I'm, I'm thankful that she's there. I'm thankful for the roles that she's played in my life before, but I no longer choose to be that because that is such a survival energy, such a survival energy. And I'm not here to just survive. I'm here to thrive. So how can I step more into thriving? I can do that by letting, by completing that stress cycle and moving into pleasure, joy, abundance, and grace by choosing my inner queen, asking her to show up. Of course, it's a lot easier to do after the miracle happens, but I had to choose it before. I had to choose to step into my inner queen and to love myself so hard and to love myself so much that I could just be with that intensity. So if this is something that you have found that you struggled with, if you are, have been in a similar situation where you're like, Oh my God, I don't know if I can handle this. I'm just going to drink five glasses of wine or a whole bottle of wine tonight instead, right? You don't need to do that. That's just going to keep making the cycle continue. And you're going to continue to find yourself in circumstances where you keep creating um, a need for the mama bear to come out. You don't need to do it anymore. You're here to thrive, not survive. So you can download the five days to epic sex and pleasure for high achieving women training. And in that training, the link is in the show notes. In that training, I give you the nervous system release techniques that you can use to throw a tantrum (laughs) that you can use to put yourself in a position in a conscious way where it's actually safe and good and a good idea to let these cycles release in you naturally. Now, obviously you don't go do them in the middle of a grocery store uh, while you're shopping, (laughs) but if you do them while you're at home in a safe environment, It's an amazing way to give yourself that opportunity to get out of survival mode and thrive. So I would love for you to go download that and day in one of the days of the training, I can't remember which one, uh, but in one of the days of the training, the five days to epic sex and pleasure training, I give you a link to the morning pleasure ritual and in the morning pleasure ritual you will learn the nervous system release techniques that I use on myself, that I used in myself in that moment (laughs) to complete a stress cycle and choose my inner queen to continue showing up and to choose something else, to write a new story, to choose thriving. So go download that at the link in the show notes and get started releasing all of the pain and the traumas that you have inside and are stored in you as well and completing these stress cycles so we don't continue writing the same story over and over again and we can step into thriving thriving mode Mm, yes 
All right, my loves. And this doesn't just pertain to a particular financial obligation or matter. Uh, This pertains to anything, anything that you find yourself in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn over. And it doesn't just pertain to mama bear identity, but I wanted to share this because it's what it's what has been really real for me recently. And I wanted to share how I was able to move through that and so to support others who maybe have felt the same. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll be excited to share with you next week, which starting next week, you're going to be able to sign up for the Sexy Feminine Leadership Summit. Oh my God, I am so freaking excited about the summit. I've nearly recorded all of the interviews and oh my God, if you are a woman in a leadership role, which you're listening to my podcast, I'm sure you are, uh, whether it be in your own business or in your career, I am so excited to bring this forward for you because these women on this summit are cherry picked. They are hand picked by me. I chose them. I chose every one of them (laughs) and I chose every one of them with great intention. So I am so excited that starting next week, you will be able to sign up for the summit and see who all is on the roster and to participate with us. The, The summit will go live June 12th, 13th and 14th, 2023. So, all right. Look forward to that and make sure you follow and subscribe to the podcast so you can join us uh, and get the link for the Sexy Feminine Leadership Summit. All right. See you next week. Hey there, Conscious Leader. Are you serious about up-leveling your sex life and relationship right now? Then you are in luck because if you have been on the personal growth and development path for some time now, maybe you've been to therapy or maybe you're even a coach, a healer, an entrepreneur, or a therapist yourself and you're wanting to embody your pleasure more deeply and become a multi-orgasmic millionaire yourself, then I want to invite you to a one hour complimentary pleasure assessment call with me that you can book at the link in the show notes or at bit.ly that's B I T dot L Y forward slash pleasure assessment. In the pleasure assessment call, I'm going to take a full diagnosis of your present moment and past experiences with sexuality and relationships, and then we'll dive into your top goals and desires for these areas of your life. From there, I'll be able to give you your top two to five blocks and obstacles in the way of you creating these goals and desires and give you the exact next steps that you get to take to overcome them and that you must take to overcome them. I have done over 700 of these calls, so there is literally nothing I have not heard. I know it can be hard to talk about these things and to crack the door open on your sexuality and talk about it. So that's why I want you to feel as comfortable as possible to open up and share with me. This is a private call. It's just you and I. So if you're someone who wants to feel more confident and sexy in your body, to tap into your feminine energy and bring that into your business to increase your sexual desire and drive to get out of your head into your body to learn how to manifest with your sexual energy to have mind-blowing orgasms in different ways or maybe just to reignite the spark with your long-term partner then book your complimentary pleasure assessment call with me today at the link in the show notes or at bit.ly that's bit.ly forward slash pleasure assessment i'll see you there